you live a five-year-old boy who traveled to West Africa is being monitored for Ebola in New York. Our own Eddie Sheehy is going to tell us why RMU is cracking down on their smoking policy and find out which Pittsburgh Steeler had a record-breaking day Sunday. Next. It's away from the sack throws down. Welcome back to RMU Live. I'm Hannah Smith. And I'm Victoria Lomax. Today we are following a breaking news story in New York City and Ebola might have struck another victim. A five-year-old boy in New York City is currently being monitored for Ebola after traveling to West Africa. The boy was taken to Bellevue Hospital Sunday night after returning from Guinea with his family on Saturday. Upon arriving at the hospital, the little boy developed a low-grade fever of 103. The mother is not showing any signs of the virus at this time and neither is under quarantine. His preliminary test results are expected early this afternoon. We're following a tragic story this morning. 14-year-old Gia Soriano, who was wounded in the Washington school shooting last week, died Sunday night. The lone gunman, Jalen Freiburg, opened fire in the school cafeteria last Friday. Freiburg was recently named the homecoming prince for this school year. Three other students remain hospitalized. The community surrounding Marysville Pilchuck High School shooting in Washington is still recovering after a student opened fire in the school's cafeteria, killing one student and injuring four others before fatally shooting himself. Megan Silberberger is a first-year social studies teacher who tried stopping Jalen Freiberger from shooting. She is currently staying with family and is asking for privacy at this time. The baseball world is in shock following the death of St. Louis Cardinals rookie outfielder Oscar Tavares. Tavares and his girlfriend died Sunday afternoon in a car accident near Tavares' hometown of Sousa, Dominican Republic. In a team statement, Chairman Bill DeWitt Jr. said, quote, Oscar was an amazing talent with a bright future who was taken from us well before his time, end quote. The gubernatorial election on November 4th is quickly approaching. Democrat candidate Tom Wolf was in Alquippa Sunday afternoon working on final campaigning efforts. Wolf's main topics were fixing the education system, making Marcellus shale work for Pennsylvania, and growing back the state's economy. Former President Bill Clinton will be campaigning today for Wolf at the Pittsburgh Union Hall. Pennsylvania Republican Governor Tom Corbett and Democratic challenger Tom Wolf brought their campaigns to southwestern Pennsylvania over the weekend. With only one more weekend to go before Pennsylvania's gubernatorial election, the two visited campaign offices pitching ideas to voters. Election night is Tuesday, November 4th, and you can watch live coverage of the night right here on RMU TV. Be sure to check out rmucenturymedia.com for colonial news, sports, lifestyles, tips for everyday living, and up-to-date election coverage on the gubernatorial rates at rmucenturymedia.com. The alternative cigarette device, e-cigs, are increasingly on the rise. While they do not pose a threat to secondhand smoke, many public places are banning the use of e-cigs inside. Eddie Sheehy has more. Last week while we were preparing for RMU Live, we were stopped for a few minutes because of a fire alarm in the Nicholson Center. Now when we investigated, we found out that it was actually caused by a student smoking an electronic cigarette indoors. So we wanted to know what RMU's policy on electronic cigarettes is and how that matches up to the rest of the state. Right now, RMU has a very clear and well-defined rule banning the use of e-cigarettes indoors. In a recent email sent out to the entire student body, they made their stance on the items very clear, stating, quote, It is Robert Morris University's policy that no smoking is permitted at any time inside university buildings, residence halls, offices, university vehicles, or any other interior space. Smoking is not permitted within 15 feet of any entrance door, open window, or air in intake. Please be advised that this includes the use of vaporizers, vapor pens, electronic cigarettes, and hookahs. One of the biggest marketing ploys for e-cigarettes is the fact that you can supposedly smoke them anywhere you want. A little research, however, proves that that's not exactly true. Back in April, Philadelphia became one of the more recent cities to apply the same restrictions to e-cigarettes as their smoke-producing counterparts. And while no citywide law banning the items is present in Pittsburgh, schools and businesses are allowed to ban e-cigarettes as they see fit. 
Now, right now in Pittsburgh, there is a lot of lobbying going on to try and get e-cigarettes banned indoors everywhere, so we will keep you updated as more news comes out on this topic. Reporting from the Nicholson Center, I'm Eddie Sheehy for RMU Live. With e-cigs being advertised for their wide acceptance of inside use, the new bans are making these advertisements misleading. Coming up next, ISIS is still in pursuit of Kobani as Turkish troops continue to stand strong. And Delaney Hasso will take you behind the scenes on how to look like a broadcaster. Overnight, overnight it was really cold. We see temperatures 33 overnight in Pittsburgh. We have a warm-up coming our way and also some snow in the forecast coming up. G morning sunshine. Wakey wakey. Text me. Are your parents home later? We can hang. LUV love you. JK. Holla back. Holla back. Holla back. <laughs> Are you with your friends? That's lame. We're in a huge fight right now. XO. What'd you dream of? Something I did. Are you on your way to the mall? Lonely. Nude pics. Send me some. Text me. I'm starving. What's for breakfast? <laughs> I bring you arts enriched raisin brahms, fortified with increased test scores and creative problem solving skills. It's good! And good for you. Bobby? Susie? Don't worry, that's just the power of the art! <laughs> <laughs> Feed your kids the arts. For 10 simple ways to learn how, visit AmericansForTheArts.org. Everything about buying a bigger place? Just waiting for a visit from the credit fair. There is no credit fairy. How else will I get a better credit score? Look, you keep your credit card balances low and only open a new card if you really need it. No fairy? There's no magic to improving your credit, but there's help, and it's free. Go to creditfairy.org. Yes, ready, ready. Oh, come on, Randy. Animal shelter, here I come. And no, I'm not crazy or emotionally damaged. That's a stereotype. I just belong to a total loser. I'm a good dog. So if you want a pet, adopt. And if you see Randy, tell him he dropped his wallet. Welcome back to RMU Live. The crisis in ISIS continues as a turning point is in reach. As the Islamic jihadists drive for Kobani, Turkey is still holding strong. For much today we've heard continued clashes to the east of the city and to the south as well but as night is falling you can see behind me three four in fact intense plumes of black smoke now we're not sure exactly what they're from it could be a vehicle on fire it could be tires set fire in the street to block visibility you can hear behind me too another explosion there's a normal uptick of activity round about nightfall but we've been seeing a number of explosions coming into the south of the city at this time. The key question though for the Syrian Kurds holding on to Kobani now and seeming comparatively upbeat in the past few days. When will they get assistance from the Iraqi Kurdish Peshmerga? They're meant to travel from northern Iraq, Kurdistan, through Turkey and then come into Kobani. Turkish President Erdogan saying today in comments to reporters that he thought in fact the Syrian Kurds didn't want to see uh, those Peshmerga fighters arrive at all and there were increasingly complications about their passage to Kobani and that tallies to some degree with what they're saying to us inside the city, what Syrian Kurds are saying to us. They've been clear they don't want the manpower the Peshmerga bring, they want the heavy weaponry, the anti-tank, anti-armor weapons they're supposed to bring with them. So increasing complications about when those men will arrive to reinforce the Kurds holding Kobani. Uh, it could have been Saturday night we've been told, it was said to be today by some Kurdish media reports. Now frankly it's unclear and increased secrecy here the Turkish army moving us away from the hills we've been uh, viewing Kobani on today uh, in the past few hours or so. Also the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights saying that by their tally over 800 people have died fighting for this city so far that's 480 ISIS fighters and just over 300 YPG Kurdish fighters here and many concerned there could be yet more loss of life as ISIS, it seems, hasn't given up its ambitions to take Kobani and the Kurds have yet to get decisive uh, resupply at this stage. Nick Payton-Walsh, CNN, near Kobani. 
As the situation in ISIS progresses, tune in to RMU Live for more updates as Turkey's defense on the Islamic State continues. There is still no arrest after a pizza delivery driver was injured after being punched in the face and robbed in North Braddock Sunday night. The driver drove back to the pizza shop where he called 911 and then was taken to the hospital to be treated for minor injuries. Officials are still unsure how much money was taken. A case of animal cruelty is on the rise in Sheridan, Pennsylvania. Sheridan resident Judy Jessup said someone killed one of the stray kittens she cares for and left its remains on her porch. Two other stray kittens were also killed earlier this year. According to police, whoever is responsible will face animal cruelty and trespassing charges. The alleged gunman who shot and killed a man in Stowe Township Sunday morning has been arrested and is currently being held in Allegheny County Jail. Police found 22-year-old Ray Evans with multiple gunshot wounds on the scene. Evans was then taken to a nearby hospital where he was pronounced dead. Detectives identified Desmond Wilson as the shooter and he is being charged with homicide and firearm violations. The constant malfunctions of ResNet has students annoyed. ResNet student approval ratings have decreased over the years. With students voicing their complaints on the annual ResNet survey and even Yik Yak, the campus has decided to do something about the internet quality. Director of Residence Life, Ann Lahoda, had this to say, quote, through our annual survey and sadly Yik Yak, we know that wireless internet seems to be a problem. It's a thing that stresses students out. People are more upset when it has to do with their work, end quote. With Halloween quickly approaching, it's that time of year again for the 7th Annual Creepy Conference here at RMU. The Gothic Horror Night will be featuring students' scary tales, including RMU Century Meanies' Dom Flamini. Anyone is free to attend this event on Wednesday from 7 to 9 p.m. in the Wheatley Center. On Friday, potential news anchors and reporters got some inside tips on makeup and what to wear for television broadcasts. RMU reporter Delaney Hassel has more. You're probably wondering why it looks like I just woke up. The good news is I didn't. Today you'll get a behind the scenes look on how our news team gets camera ready. Being a news anchor is more than a passion for journalism and raw talent. There are many components of how we prepare to be on camera. We were given the opportunity to get advice and help from two veteran behind the scenes TV personnel. Longtime makeup artist Lori Geiger discussed how little things don't go unnoticed. Well, I, I do think that if there's something different about somebody, they will more concentrate on that rather than listening to what they're saying. I remember one time Patty Burns was doing the news and she said, our country is at war. And we got calls in the station that asked if Patty parted her hair on the other side. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh my. It's a little scary. Being on camera requires a certain look. Anchors need specific colors and styles to look presentable. Clothing consultant Beverly Morrow-Jones tells us more. Everything that we do in front of the camera influences how people feel about us. What's important to the station for whom someone works is how they feel about the station too. So anything that gives a positive vibe where people will respond favorably, it's all positive for the station. So the better the talent looks, the more talented the talent is, the better the station is perceived, the more advertising, the more dollars, the better ratings. Here are just a few of the many tips that the women gave us. Don't wear stripes, intricate, or busy patterns on camera. Tailored and well-fitting clothes should be worn. Neutral colors work best for both clothes and makeup. Blues and purples are not good makeup colors. As you can see, I look a lot different than I did before. I'm wearing a shirt that complements my skin tone. My hair is down and it looks a lot better than it did pull back. Simple things like this make all the difference. From outside the Academic Media Center, I'm Delaney Hassel, RMU Century Media. Thanks, Delaney. Among other things students learn, that a little can go a long way when it comes to dressing for the camera. Coming up next, Ben Roethlisberger is on the heels of record-breaking day at Heinz Field. And could there be snow in our future? Jordan Morley will update you on the potential for snowflakes in western Pennsylvania. Stay tuned. Of course, I am here with Romo. How are you doing today, Romo? Great. All right, so Romo, just a few questions. How do you think the game is going right now for the Colonials? All right, on top of that, like, what do you think about the play of jo uh, Paul Jones 
and this defense just 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 demolishing uh, Morgan State right now. All right, well, you heard it here first. Romo with his insight to the game. Back to you guys. Be sure to tune in to Colonial Sports Center every Thursday, 9.30 p.m. on armycentralmedia.com and Channel 98 around the Moon Township area. Romo, have you downloaded the app? Romo, have you seen this app? for you my favorite part of it is the police blotter check this out when you click into it you're going to go right to the top left and as soon as you click on it everything will be there that you need so you can stay safe download the rmu century media app on the app store Romo likes it and so will you Welcome back to RMU Live. I'm Kristen Kudla with this week's Sports Roundup. The city of Pittsburgh enters a new week on a high after both the Steelers and the Penguins won their games this weekend. The Steelers sported their Bumblebee jerseys yesterday as they took on the Indianapolis Colts in Week 8 in the NFL. The Steel City came out swinging and never stopped, holding the Colts to a single field goal in the first quarter. Indianapolis then scored two touchdowns and a field goal in the second, but that was no match to the Steelers' four touchdowns, which included an incredible catch by wide receiver Antonio Brown. The Steel City prevailed in the contest with a 51-34 Steelers victory. Steelers quarterback Ben Roethlisberger made not only team history, but also in the NFL. Roethlisberger set the Steelers' single-game passing yards and passing touchdown records, as well as being the first player in the NFL history with multiple 500-yard games. The Pittsburgh Penguins played this weekend in Smashville, Tennessee, as they took on the Nashville Predators. The Penguins put their first points up on the board when Sidney Crosby was able to poke it past Predators goaltender Pecorine. Pittsburgh was able to tally two more goals in the third when both Evgeny Malkin and Pascal Dupuis found the back of the net. The Pens were able to shut out the Preds with a final score of 3-1. The 2014 World Series is still underway as Game 5 was played last night in San Francisco. The series was all tied up going into the contest, but an impressive show by the Giants shut down the Royals with a final score of 5-0. With the win that puts San Fran up in the series three games to two, and game six will be played on October 28th at 8 p.m. Well, that's all the time we have over here in sports. Now over to Jordan with the weather. You know what really sucks is that my friend had uh, Ben Roethlisberger on his bench in fantasy football, 60 to 70 points. Ouch, he could have won. Anyway, so for the forecast, sunny in mid-60s today. It's going to be warm or actually above average, and for tomorrow, I want to talk about tomorrow it's definitely because we're going to have sun's going away, clouds are going to move in, and rain by the evening. We're going to have a really strong cold front. And how strong am I talking? Let's skip to the five-day forecast because for today, it's going to be warm, 66, 59. Look at Tuesday. I have a 60% chance of showers, 70 degrees, really warm. I had Anthony Moretti actually tell me that, you know, I'm going to get a fail class because I'm getting, you know, 70-degree weather in the forecast. For Wednesday, morning showers. 52 is a high, 51 is a low. For Thursday, look at 49, that's going to be really cold. And by Friday, more showers possible, but look at that low of 31. Friday night and Saturday, I have a chance of snow in the forecast. For all my latest weather, you can follow me on Twitter, Jordan Morley TV, or go to Facebook, facebook.com slash Jordan Daniel Morley, and I'll have my latest snow forecast all for you. So... Again, recap, sunny today, rain tomorrow, rain Wednesday morning. Thursday's going to be quiet, and for Friday, cooler chance of showers and snow showers in the evening. And for the, for the weekend, we'll have a chance of 40-degree weather and maybe some snow. Now, it's not going to be accumulating, but it's going to be enough that it could be cause a headache. Now, back to the news desk. 
Thank you, Jordan, for that weather update and Kristen with the sports. And that's all we have for RMU Live this morning. We'll see you next time.